Hey everybody, welcome to this month's episode of the Disc Only Podcast. Hey, they're still working, thank goodness. Everything broke before the show, so we had to start a little late. Sorry about that. I'm your main host, or one of your four main hosts, as always, Proton John. From the ashes I rise like a phoenix! I'm Tom. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Steven, and I am, uh, no longer sick. I'm Jared. Hello. I like how we had, like, no energy going into actually getting set up for the show, and then Tom used the remainder for just <laughs> beginning half of his intro. That's it. That, that's, that's it. it. There's All literally the no is more gone. energy left for the rest of the episode. <laughs> I, I have, th this is it. This is the heat death of the disc only podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we've made it 40 episodes. That's pretty good. We've hit energy equilibrium. God, it's, it is episode 40 in it. Jeez. It sure is. That's a lot. And to think this all started with a feud between John and Steven over trying to get them to play the, the Game Boy player on their charity streams. Does it even count as a feud at that point? Yeah, I don't know if it was a, a feud. Um, what's a better word for it? Well, y'all debated. I think a curse is the correct. Word. A curse is chicken. Was, a was, word. I guess, yeah, cur <laughs> I, I guess it was a curse because every time you got it and tried to do it, something would go wrong, right? Yeah, there was there was there's a fun history of the uh, Game Boy Player disc being uh, a source of bad. <laughs> <laughs> a source I mean, of bad, but it led to. Well, I don't know if I want to call disc only good, but it led to something at least neutral. <laughs> this we, neutral presentation. We are we are standard at the best. We are standard. We are mid at best, but mid. mid. <laughs> but this this show is not bad. It's our, it's our new tagline. I don't I don't know how something. to feel about this tagline we're giving the show. Disc only. Disc only. It's, it's not bad. <laughs> disc only. Mid mid at best. <laughs> <laughs> Disc only, the starfield of podcasts. Oh, <laughs> over budget and underperforming. <laughs> We're over budget. We have a budget. <laughs> hey, our, yeah, our budget was one dollar. We've gone over that by at least a couple thousand percent. It was pretty oh, easy no. to go over that budget. Oh man. Well, we gave we gave Dan a like. A, a crumpled up one dollar bill and a stick, and he managed to put this together. <laughs> well, I guess. It, okay, well, if we're if we're over budget, I guess it, it's time for some some cuts. So I guess, I guess I'm gone now. Okay. Did you just you, fire yourself? You know <laughs> darn well that I'd be the first to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going just, to stay. I was going to stay completely quiet for like a minute. I wish but... you had, because I was reaching to turn off your head just completely <laughs> on the stick. <laughs> yeah, like, there it is. It's gone. Up. Oh. Oh my god. This is this is where we all start disappearing one at a time. <laughs> Come on back, Jerry. I mean, fine. if we ever if if we ever oh. do end the show, we should definitely do it with like, you know, some sort of like paintball fight. Uh, why why paintball specifically? Well, it's just something where we're like some sort of uh so, something something yeah, something Violence where we like, to be involved in some way shape or form. I we think have so, to, yeah. We we have to we have to like we have to safely gun that's it. That's that's how disco only goes down. Safely gun. Yeah, I haven't I haven't played paintball since I was in high school, but I, I would I would play it again. <laughs> yeah, you know, I haven't played paintball. <laughs> Dude, the last time last time I went and played paintball, I had a freaking awesome time. But the shirt that I was wearing was like, for some reason, really rough. And I have never had more chafed nipples than after that. day. <laughs> it was insane. That's, That's what I remember about that day. Not the great freaking like gameplay I did. No, my <laughs> they were my nipples. Screaming That's, at me. You're just thinking about your nipples at all times. Yes, dude, they were in pain, man. Oh, really, you took you I'm took really off your sorry. shirt, and someone thought they were putting on the brakes. <laughs> no, I, I took off the shirt, and I was just like, I will never wear this shirt again. I haven't to that to this day. You still um, have the shirt? I do not. No, it was actually a um. It was like a printed shirt, and it looked like uh, like a an ugly Christmas sweater with like Mario and Luigi on it, and it was a really cool shirt. But I learned that day that it was too rough 
for me. <laughs> it was too rough for me. <laughs> and I just did not. I I I don't have that shirt anymore. I thought it was weird that they put Christmas lights right over the nipples of that, but I guess it makes sense now. <laughs> Disc only will chafe your nipples. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think we're gonna go back to mid at best. That's a good slogan. <laughs> Disc only, non toxic, I... dissolves in water. Uh, mid at best. Uh, the first time I ever played paintball, the very, very first time I ever got shot was on across my knuckles mm. where I was holding the gun. Ooh. And that is not a fun place to get shot. Mm. Dude, somebody, uh, somebody came up to me dur- on that same day. Somebody came up to me and shot me point blank directly in the face through my face mask because he was coming around to like breach the building that I was in and I startled him. And he just freaking popped off two shots directly in my face. I'm like, ref, hello? And the ref didn't even care at all. And that was like the day that I realized, ah, I don't know if I want to continue playing, <laughs> especially with these guys, like specifically, because yeah. they were, they. I think they were like in the ref's pocket, man. Like, yeah. actually. You just get shot and you're just like, <laughs> dude like it's like you're supposed to come up and tap them if you if you are like right on top of somebody right but no yeah. he just freaking laid into me i was like okay oh i think i ended up shooting him in the kneecap for that too i got so mad i just think i turned around and popped a shot and walked away man we were just talking about little john before the uh the podcast started i'm sorry the way you said okay reminded me of that okay <laughs> okay a little fun, yeah. little fun disc only fact is that before every podcast we play a little john song to get ourselves <laughs> oh my God. That is, can that is you not name I thought, a little john were... song <laughs> Where he's not, uh, where from he's the not... window to the walls. That's not the name till of the, the song. Sweat drops down your balls. That's that's a song. Now, now is that his song or is he just like the hype man for it? No, that's Cause... that's that's his. Song. I think it's him okay. and someone else. The only the only one that I remember the name for is uh, turned down it's for the... what? Little John and the East Side Boys is the technical uh, artist. Shake it like a soul, shake it, shake it like a soul, shake it. Oh god. <laughs> You think I don't know Lil John's songs? Like it's a piece of cake to bake yeah. a pretty cake. What? Dude. You got us there. Man. Oh, God. Okay. I got to tell you all a story. There's Lazy a vi- Town. There's a video online uh, of a really good friend of mine from college. His name is Vishon. And in in the video, he is singing to It's a Piece of Cake to Break a Pretty Cake. And he's sitting in a chair, like, dancing, right? And when the song breaks down, he goes, break it down. Let me see you back it up. He jumps out of the chair and his freaking his uh, I can't remember what type of phone he had. It was like a Blackberry was in his je- or in his shirt pocket and it just falls into the ground and explodes into like a million pieces. And he just goes, <laughs> oh, sh-, like, <laughs> screams it. it is one of the funniest freaking things I, I have ever seen in my life. I'm so sad I wasn't there for that moment, but. It was it was sent to me, and I know, and I still have it in my favorite somewhere. <laughs> oh my God, no! You all need to back it up. <laughs> God, that's a freaking that is one of my favorite videos of all time. I think I'll see if I can find it. Break it down. And, <laughs> uh, what's um? Oh, what uh, what's the song? Hold on, I'm gonna have to Google it. <laughs> I have yeah. I have a related little John story that is neat but i don't know enough to remember what it's called oh it's turned down for what that's what it is um that video is wild so so i just want i just want to put this into the ether that dan is on the cusp of like pop culture and the reason i know this is that the day that the turned down for what video came out dan sent it to me Dan sent it to me when it had like 3,000 views and was like, <laughs> this is a good music video. And I watched it and I was like, yeah, that is a good music video. And then that song exploded and had like millions. And I was like, Dan, what? how? I don't know if Dan's just subscribed to Little John. I'm not sure. <laughs> I would believe it. Uh, 100%. He's, like Dan, the are Nost- you, are- he's the Nostradamus of pop culture. Dan, are you subscribed to Little John? 
Oh, am I allowed to talk? You're, you're yeah, absolutely. Talk. Yeah, there's no restriction. Okay, well, I'm I'm a big fan of the Daniels. Um, if the, you know them, the Daniels. Is that like a yeah. nepotism thing or what? <laughs> no, no. It, <laughs> woo. It, you know, it's um, it's I think it's like Daniel Kwan. Uh, it, they're they're the ones who ended up directing um everything everywhere. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, but they they did a number of music videos and they directed that one. And uh, oh my, really? Yeah. Oh no wonder why it's such a wild freaking video. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah, fun 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 fact about that song is that um they they had a remote control thing for um the thing in his pant never mind yeah uh yeah it's great no keep keep going <laughs> um, it's a great music video okay i'm gonna leave <laughs> i see clockwork prices in chat daniel and daniel and daniel 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 and daniel and daniel daniel oh my god oh god when are see we gonna talk about charlie daniels what about daniel day lewis he plays a mean fiddle we could devote the entire podcast to Dan's. I'm down. Only, my favorite, only my favorite Dan is only. our producer Dan. <laughs> I sense bias. Um, I is this like a nepotism Dan, thing, or <laughs> I, I have known Dan longer than I have known Charlie Daniels, and I think that that's playing into it a little bit. Steven, I just want you to know that whenever you bust out laughing, it is one of my favorite things on planet Earth. Thank you. Like, you have you have one of the most it's, incredible freaking explosive laughs ever. It's incredible. It's usually never a chuckle. It usually just kind of like it. It like you said, it, it's explosive. <laughs> like right. I laugh all the freaking time, so y'all know what I sound like. But man, when Steven goes, it's like a rare. It's like a. It's like a uh, a delicacy. You know, you you yeah. just enjoy it while it's here. <laughs> I I like I like to laugh. Ever since I was a child, that was. Humor was my favorite thing. <laughs> Put the humor inside of me because I like to do a funny. There, there was a inject uh, it directly <laughs> into my veins. There was a highlight uh, video that I saw of you, Stephen, where you were playing. I think it was uh, Skyrim, and they spawned in a bunch of crabs, and it just it absolutely destroyed you, and it just that just gave me life. <laughs> my, the the audience really liked to spawn crabs. <laughs> um was was it like a so did, did you encounter any drogger during that uh that crowd control stream uh like any of the yeah, screaming I mean, any, any of the screaming ones in particular no okay my buddy i remember <laughs> so my buddy uh my buddy matt bragg did a skyrim crowd control scream uh scream stream and the he came across the uh like one of the droggers that does the the fusro dash out crowd control in their infinite wisdom, replaced it with the Quagsire scream. <laughs> oh, I did wow. not know that. Yeah, I think I think I would have remembered hearing that, and I did not hear that. At I least on a, at least on Matt's stream, it was uh, it was uh, it it was my scream because because like because he didn't know it was in there, and then he's just like, I'm pretty sure that's Tom. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, I was at the beginning of the game, so I, mm. I I didn't find anything too difficult. I mean, I found sorry, I found every moment of playing it very difficult because yeah. terrible oh, things yeah. kept happening. But like, I didn't find any hard enemies. That was a uh, that mod the the mod to insert the Quagsire scream as the uh, as the unrelenting force shout was made by uh, by my mod Corey. That's just, just perfect. Yeah. I just wanted to give credit where credit was due because, like, because I'm very appreciative of that, and it, it's made for some really funny moments. Mm -hmm. Have you, um, like, so were you were you playing like similar to how how like you usually play Skyrim? I guess like uh, like, like did you go for like a different build? Uh, no. So back in uh, 2021, when Mal was recovering from her endometriosis surgery, we couldn't do uh, our normal Friday stuff. So I was doing things a few weeks by myself. And during that time, I started a new file with, like, my old character, with my Argonian. And I played through the new content that had been put in Skyrim for whatever it was called, Anniversary Edition. 
So I had done several weeks of that and gotten pretty far. So that's the file I loaded up for crowd control. So it resumes this file that I had played like three years ago. And that was fun. Yeah. Well, a crowd control Skyrim is nuts. <laughs> and the other, the other thing that was really nice is that um, we had it set up where uh, Chaz had control of it. So I didn't, I didn't, I had nothing to do with it. So Chaz could run it remotely and he was able to change things on the fly to prov to like allow progress to happen so it wasn't complete madness it was like controlled madness and that was very good i <laughs> so yes that is that is very important and i have seen like like cuz yes you can do that like you can you can go in and i don't know if there's like a like a, a switch for it i imagine chaz being the wizard that he is could probably program a switch to just like disable everything completely while still keeping crowd control active but um but yes you can't on the fly you can turn certain effects off on and off uh, as you need them to uh that happened with me during the last crowd control stream i did of uh ocarina of time because there was a small glitch with it where if the chat give i haven't seen this with arrows but if the chat gives you deku seeds before you have the slingshot it thinks that you have the slingshot, so when you finally do get the slingshot, you don't get the slingshot, you get a, 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 a seed capacity upgrade and no slingshot. Oh. Hmm. How do you then get the slingshot? You cannot get the slingshot. Do you need the slingshot? You need the slingshot. The sling, uh -oh. uh, the slingshot, I'm trying to think of like, because there. I think there's some areas where it's not entirely necessary. Because if you have the boomerang, I think you can beat the Great Deku Tree without the slingshot. Uh, you can beat Dodongo's Cavern as an adult. Uh, Jabu Jabu's Belly, I think if you have the boomerang, you don't need the slingshot. Uh, and I don't think the slingshot's necessary in the... Um, in the bottom of the well, so you might not need the slingshot. It does make a lot of stuff a, a lot easier. I think there's some stuff that you need the slingshot in order to access, but there's a lot of it that you don't. Okay. It's been a while since I played Ocarina of Time. So, I might go back and play this. Oh, oh, I played a video game for leisure. You can do that? <laughs> uh, legally, no, but I was sick with COVID for three and a half weeks, so during that period of time I was allowed. Um, and I played through the entirety of Super Mario 64 again. I got, I got 120 Ooh. stars. Nice. And that was fun. And man, that video game is from 1996 and is still fun. Isn't I think that it, bizarre? <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> Steven, have you heard it's... about games from 1985? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There, there, there exists a period of video game history, like, early polygonal video games, early 3D video games, that a lot of times is not so good. And Mario 64 is fine. It's great. Yeah. Like, I, the sprite-based games, they're all fine. They're, they're good. But, like, the polygonal games, the early stuff, like early PlayStation, early N64, those can be rough. Super Mario 64 is fantastic. It's like, it's well, I think, the, I mean, the biggest complaint, and that's, it's the complaint with, like, every early 3D game is the camera. Yeah, that's that's the biggest issue with it. Everything else, everything else about Super Mario sixty four is great. And I had multiple issues when I was playing it with the camera, where I was yeah. like, "Please do the thing I want." And it's like, "Nope." I'm like, "Okay." You gotta slip lack of two like a twenty for him to actually work. There's, I mean, there's there's just some portions of it where it's like, because of like, I guess it's like how stuff is rendered or how they want you to see where you, like where you are in that one. They just refuse to turn the camera in a certain way. Um, honestly, uh, I'm trying to think now, uh, they, a group of people recently decompiled Super Mario 64 and then turned it into like, a, into like a natively running PC game with a bunch of, um, like quality of life stuff. Um, and you, you, I think you can play it just like as it was like at launch, but one of the biggest ones is just like, you know, if you're playing with like an Xbox controller, just mapping the camera to the right stick. Oh yeah, no, that one improves the game <laughs> so much, dude. Super yeah. Super Mario sixty four plus, I think it's called. I played it once like that. I'm like, I can't go back. I can't go back. I played it, also, it um it also when it has... came out when it came out on DS. I played yeah. through it all again, and you can control the can't you can do you control the, no you don't control the camera you control the walking. 
you can, yeah, the, the walkie you can control or. with the touch screen. I think you, you can set it so that it swaps between the two. Yep. Okay. I haven't I haven't played that in a long time. I've yeah, only the, played through the full game on uh, on DS. Like, well, the only time that I've ever played Super Mario sixty four, like the actual one, was the crowd control stream that I did, and that was a mess. <laughs> I've just never played it, so it was like I got stuck in the final cutscene where you're flying away from Bowser because if anybody does any effects, you fall in the cutscene and die. So it took me about forty five minutes to get from Bowser to the end of the game. <laughs> Good Lord. That was wonderful. I had, um, no, the, the, well, the other thing with, uh, with 64 DS is that if, if you don't use the touch screen, like you have about as much precision as, uh, in walking with the touch screen as you do with a joystick, but you can also use the D pad. And the only difference between that was that you had the, you had to hold a button to run. And if you let go of it, then you'd walk very, which was, very bizarre. Hmm. I, it, I I haven't played that game since it came out, but I, I do have very vague memories of finding the controls difficult. And w I can imagine why. <laughs> because have you ever played the, you played the multiplayer stick? Have you ever played the multiplayer mode in Mario 64 DS? Yeah. It's like it's I mean like it's it's not great. It's it, it but it's uh it's it was it was fun for its time, especially considering that like it was the first it was the first handheld console I owned that had a uh, wireless communication, so it was much easier to play multiplayer games with people. Dude, I freaking the, loved Picto Chat so much. The, the I did that with my DS, brother so much. Like when it came out, it felt to me. I mean, I guess I was young, but it felt very revolutionary. Just the yeah. idea of being able to have. <laughs> I mean, Picto Chat is a good, good example, but like. Playing games wirelessly, in some cases, you didn't need more than, like, one game. So you could, like, send the data to other people, and you could play with just, like, one cartridge. Mm -hmm. That was I, amazing. <laughs> I got I got detention once because during a... I, I had a study hall with a friend, and it was, it, was, it was pretty strict about, like, where you could be, like, in the school during, like, your study halls and whatnot. I had study hall with a friend who had study hall at the same time, but in a different classroom that was close by. So we would like chat through picto chat and teachers walking around. Son of a bitch draws a dick and sends it to me. <laughs> and the teacher sees that and I get detention for it. Got him. I love that. Oh, oh that's, man. That's great. That's very great. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't thought a whole lot about like original DS games in a while but there was some real amazing stuff on there yeah um, i mean like mm -hmm. when i th when honestly like the first thing that comes to mind when i think about ds games are, are is like the pokemon games like i can't think of any ds game where i where i'm like like i played plenty of them like the the two outside of pokemon i can think of that i would that like i enjoy more than pokemon are probably mario 64 and uh mario kart ds uh, i i played played a lot of mario kart, mario kart ds Played a lot of New Super Mario Brothers, um, and the and I didn't play a lot of the full game when it came out. But the original DS came with a like demo cart. The for, Metroid, uh, Metroid, Metroid Prime, Prime Hunters. Hunters. Yeah. yeah. And playing that demo, I was like, "This is amazing. This is a first-person shooter on a handheld." I was like, "This is incredible," hmm. and it was. Anyway, eventually the PSP came out. Wait, and then you could just play Nintendo handhelds on that through emulation. Yeah, and also it had like an analog stick, and yeah. it was prettier. But still, the DS was really impressive. God, yeah, it was so weird that it like I can't think of like of having a handheld with like spinning disc stuff in it anymore, just because of like. When I worked at GameStop, so many times I would get like the Xbox 360 copies of games coming into trade that had that giant ring scratch around them because they moved it while it was spinning and I'm just thinking to myself how the heck did they get away with that on the PSP even on, on Walkman I, I'm surprised they got away with that dude the PSP was my like main console whenever well other than the Game Boy Advance like I had a I had a DS but like the PSP was what really freaking pushed me into gaming like god I, I freaking loved that thing so much were any of you the one guy who had the copy of Mario Kart DS and just linked up to eight other friends to like where you were the only one who could select the character of what else to play as shy guys. 
y I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, in general, like, I had... I had the games. So, like, people might have a DS, and they got it for, like, one or two specific games, and those are the games they played. But if we were, like, on a car trip or whatever, like, I was the one that had games, so I was like, okay, we're going to play the multiplayer game so we can play together. Mm -hmm. Download play was such a good, like, idea in general. When was yeah. the DS? Was that 2004? 2004. Yeah, 2004. And then the okay, 3DS so was, came out in 2011. So I was 15. Did anybody have the DSi? I did, yeah. Yeah, uh, I I got one and it, it I really didn't stick with it for very long, honestly. I, I mean, there, I were remember games, I there were games that you could only. I mean, like I'm pretty sure there were some games you can get on the 3DS in the same way, but there were some games you could only get on the DSi. Yeah, like the 3DS was freaking incredible. Um, I I think that the the GBA and the GBASP was my main Nintendo console growing up, though. Other than uh, and the color, I I dude. I played so much on the on the Game Boy Color back in the day. Like, mm -hmm. God, I, I, I'm trying to remember because I remember that I played through uh, it was like Mega Man Extreme. Right. So it was like a a weird amalgamation of Mega Man X1 and X2 put together. And that was like my main way of playing that game. I never played X1 or X2 on the SNES. It was I, always I'm only on the GBA. Or I'm GB. sorry, there's probably a, I understand why you're talking through it, but the fan art that just came up was on. incredible. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Thank you for that. It is. Is Jared wearing a T-shirt that's got Christmas lights where the nipples are Heck and they're, yeah, dude. they're flashing and they're red and green for Christmas and Mario and Luigi. I need that. I need that on a shirt. <laughs> God, I would I would have to. OK, so real talk, though, real talk for a second. Whenever I used to whenever I first started doing the drumming thing um, and like uh, especially back in the the church building, because it was always really hot and I would sweat like a motherfucker, like I would actually have to put um, like tape over my nips in order to not freaking get chafed to hell. It, it sucked. <laughs> and there ain't nothing worse than having to rip that sucker off after the cat. <laughs> is, where, where are you getting these shirts? <laughs> uh, well, listen, I, I have, I am a very, very like sensitive person whenever it comes down to the type of cloth that I'm, that I wear. Like, I don't like anything rough at all. Like are I you can the princess in the pee. What's happening? Yes. Man? Erica calls me that all the freaking time. I'm not <laughs> even joking. Like uh, I get, I get what is called what I like to call sock dandruff. And those are the little like balls of lint that are inside of your socks. I feel those and I hate them. I am very like I've gotten better as I've gotten older, but I've always been super sensitive about clothing. That's why you'll only see me wear like five or six different shirts on my stream until I find another one that works very well for me. You know, like that feels is it, good. Is it certain types of fabric that yes. work better? Yes. Um, Do you know I, what those fabrics are? Uh, I can never remember whenever I'm clothing shopping, but uh, I, oh, I can look at some of the down. shirts and see it. I know, man. Listen, you don't think to. Okay. When was the last time you wrote down what your shirt was made out of? I mean, I'll, but yeah. I don't have an actual allergy to my shirts. Well, oh. no, no, I, I don't have an allergy. It's just like, it's like a sense of, like, I just have sensitive yeah. skin. My, I have sensitive skin too. My shirts don't do that to me. Oh, well, yeah, I've never, lucky I've you. never <laughs> worried about like rubbing my nipples off. So that's not been a thing that I've considered. But if I in fact, were, Steven's I... already rubbed his nipples off. He actually has got nothing underneath there. <laughs> I, have, I have one. He just took but... the sand blaster and just went to town. <laughs> Woo! But like, oh, yeah, it's, it seems like, you know, if you could figure out what that was, then you would be able to just purchase some like a few different shirts that were just that. And, that's and call, to, that's why they so, call him one nip George. So to answer, yeah. there, there was there's a couple people that were asking, um, no, I am not on the spectrum. Um, I know that that is a thing, but I am not on the spectrum. It's just I'm I'm very particular whenever it comes down to clothing, and that's about it, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I just don't like I just don't like freaking feeling stuff in my in my socks, or or on my yeah, or my nips for that matter. <laughs> that I mean that's fair. I, yeah, some people Most have people very don't. sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. I have apparently the exact opposite, because uh, until I got. An elect I got an electric razor a few years back, but before that, for the entire history of me shaving for like 10, 15 years or whatever, um, I used a like a disposable razor 
and I didn't use any shaving cream. I just you were not the only just... person I know that has done this, and I told like I told him like, hey, maybe do this because it will help with your breakouts. But it sounds like you don't have that issue. Hmm. Well, I like it's the the concern is sensitivity, right? Because it can like hurt your skin, and like that, I never had that problem. You never found dry um, skin from shaving or anything like that. Never. So, so. I I, can, I I shave without cream, but I like I can't do the disposable razor. I I have I an electric use... razor. I would keep a single like one dollar disposable razor for like nine months. Jesus, what, what a, because what like a boss, because like it was fine. It was cutting off the hair, and my face wasn't chafing or anything. There was no problem. <laughs> and when I would tell people this, they would be horrified. And His I was like, "Listen, man, it's it's not hurting me." They're like, "Isn't it like cutting your face or like hurting?" I'm like, "No, I'm fine." I've actually never used like a straight razor or anything like that. I've always had like the electric shavers. Like <laughs> they work fine for me. Mallory's just like, uh, I don't know what to do. It's like kissing a leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, I, if I can, I think some people understand this mindset. Like if I can save some money somewhere, I, I will. And if I, <laughs> if I don't know this any problem, Oh my God! I have a story for you for today. Do it. <laughs> Sorry, this oh, is he, related. He's excited. He's excited. Let's go. Stephen lives. Okay. Don't don't look at chat. Chat. If you know what I'm going to say, do not say what it is. I'm hiding I'm chat ask, for this story. I'm, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask the three of you. Okay. Yeah. If you had some medication in your in your in your cupboard, okay, mm -hmm. and and it had expired, how far uh. back, if at all? Would the expiration date be, and you'd still be okay to use it? In this specific instance, the thing that I needed today was Pepto-Bismol. It was a, a tablet form of pep Pepto-Bismol. What, how, how, how old would that medicine be, and you'd still be okay to take it? Probably two I, I months, would, maybe. I would toss three. it on expiration, honestly. So here's, here's the thing. <laughs> I... For the longest time, I never checked the expiration dates on that. Oh, my God. So, like, I, I guess I'd be okay with, like, any time as long as the packaging looked current. So, as long as they didn't go through, like, a mid-90s, like, transfer to, like, a new... <laughs> To like a new, like if it, if it went from like the old Cherry Coke logo to the, if like if, if they, if it was, like let's say Cherry Coke is a medication, if it still had the old Cherry Coke logo on it, I, I, love wouldn't, the I phrase, wouldn't take it. I love the phrase, let's say that Cherry Coke is a medication <laughs> <laughs> prescribed to you by Dr. Tom. So, so if you're, so what you're saying is, is that as long as they didn't go through a full brand change, you're just fine. I, I, I would probably take it. Yes. So. <laughs> I would so have to happened? notice the brand change too. Like I'd probably, t if I took the medication <laughs> and then saw an ad for it later and saw the label was different, I'd be like, oh no. <laughs> so what happened today is that my, my stomach has been a little screwed up. Uh, I, I think I had some food that may not have been fully cooked, but I was a little, I was a little sick on my stomach. And when we started stream today, this afternoon, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, man, this is bad. Like my stomach is really killing me. And I was like, well, we probably have some Pepto-Bismol. So I knew in my heart, I was like, this is going to be expired. I just know it's going to be expired. So I made chat guess, like, what year <laughs> it expired. Year. And I went back and I, I, found, I found it. It was there. And there was a lot in there. And I grabbed two and I looked at the expiration date. And the Pepto-Bismol expired... In 2011, that is 13 Whoa. years ago. Steven. <laughs> Steven, Steven. Now, John, hold on. You know, you know, it's 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 weird. While you were streaming, I was wondering about that bismuth crystal growing out of your left shoulder. <laughs> so, 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 hold on. There's more to the story. I took those pills because, of course, I would. Uh. It's important to remember that it, if it expired in 2011, that it was I got it earlier. So it's probably something I bought in college. And then I've just had forever. The wow. Important, the important part of this story is that whether because the active effects of the medicine are still fine or placebo, I took that and I did get better. 
And uh, <laughs> that is why I don't throw away medication. <laughs> Bro, it's finally uh, aged. Ah, uh, yes. The 2012, <laughs> the, tw- the 2010 Pepto-Bismol. A grand vintage. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not here to say, I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm not here to say <laughs> that it's okay to take all old medicines. Consult a doctor. But for me, I was like, this Pepto-Bismol expired in 2011. It's not going to kill me. At worst, it won't work. And you know what? It did work, and I still have a box, and it's probably going to last me another 12 years. Bro, this Pepto is banging. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's wild, man. Let me tell you. Holy frick. Yeah, I, if I Excuse see... you, I'm just going to go into my wine cellar and get my Advil from 1993. <laughs> uh... My vintage medicine cabinet. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. If it was a liquid, I don't think I could do it. I don't know. You do oh, not do that with liquids. Oh, Pills you can get away would, with for the most part. Liquids, absolutely not. Yeah, Ew. I don't. Yeah, if if I like, well, hold on. If it was a cough syrup that was only two or three years old, that'd be fine. But two or Pepto, three no. years, I'm talking about yeah. two or three months at the most. Do, no. do, do not take do, do not take medical advice from Stephen. George. No, someone in chat points out that your Pepto Bismol is older than Kepler. <laughs> yes yes kepler was born in 2012 <laughs> all right guys i got my grandpa's i got my grandpa's first aid kit inside is a is a bottle of cherry flavored coca-cola tonic <laughs> <laughs> and freaking like some lozenges from 1945 anyway you know it's it's fine the funny thing is i i had taken this pepto-bismol a few months ago uh, I didn't look at the expiration date at the time, but I knew that we had some and I had taken it because I had felt a little sick uh, on a different stream. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take that. And it worked then. <laughs> so in my mind, I was like, this is going to work. And it did. And I love that. Oh, I just man. love that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm selling to you today something grand that will cure all your ills. It's a bottle of Pepto-Bismol from the year 2011. <laughs> 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 we were trying to decide how old the medicine is. Cause I don't know what the shelf life of Pepto-Bismol is. So like if it's a few years, who knows? Like, I think I probably got it in college, but during the breakfast stream or, or moon or whatever, Chaz was like, maybe this was a high school graduation gift. <laughs> I was like, maybe I got this in high school. I don't know. Most Dude, Pepto bottles from- I see are probably good for two, three years. Uh, this yeah. reminds me of like a couple months back. I um I had picked up some food to go over to a friend's house and play some uh play some games with them. And um I I forgot to get like pickles for the sandwich that I was that I was eating. I was like, hey, yo, you got any pickles in your fridge? And he was like, Yeah, go check. And I go in and there's a jar of pickles from 2018. This is the year 2024. And I'm sitting there like, but you, why do you have this still? He goes, oh, they're still good. I'm like, no, no, they are not. <laughs> and then I went to go check like some other stuff in his fridge and everything in his fridge. And I mean, everything was expired from at least three years prior. And I was like, dude, <laughs> dude, what are you doing? <laughs> And he goes, bro, I ate some of that the other day. I'm like, are you freaking joking with me? <laughs> you know, he's fine. It's penicillin. He's all good. Dude. I mean, I could not believe it was like, it was like I opened a fridge and it was like a time capsule or something. What, like, it what, was insane. What's really funny is that like that, <laughs> that, that that's, that's a, I could see that as a, a legitimate bachelor strategy of being like, you know, because because, you know, there's like that joke of like, oh, like I'm a bachelor and my fridge has like beer and a jar of mustard in it. Mm-hmm. That's a legitimate strategy of just stocking your fridge with expired food just to give the appearance that you have everything together. Dude, I mean, yeah, that that is true. What, what's funny, though, is that like everything else that was outside of his fridge was perfectly fine. Like everything else that he used on like a regular basis was fine. It was just the stuff in his fridge. And I was like, what the? This doesn't make any sense. That's why I was like, are you are you using this as like long storage? Like what is going on? I mean, uh, so I I uh, I also have some some thoughts and opinions about expiration dates regarding food, but there are some <laughs> things like I don't play around with. Um so like meat, 
No. You don't play around with meat. If no, no. If meat, if meat, meat, meat. I swear to God, if you say milk is okay. When, well. <laughs> oh my you God. Smell it. You smell it. The expiration, the expiration date written on milk <laughs> is is a wild number. Sometimes well, it's, it's, it, it well, expires a it's week not an early. It's not an expiration date. It's a sell-by date. Yeah, well, sometimes it's a week early. Sometimes it's a week later. That number is useless. Use your nose. <laughs> Use your nose. So if you get so something very interesting, if you get like a regular gallon of milk, it has a very like short expiration date, right? Like it's about a week or so, maybe 10 days after. If you get like the stuff that has like the the low lactose or no lactose milk, like the lactate milk, that crap lasts for like two and a half months. Like it's kind of nuts. Yeah. Like how long? There's a brand of ultra pasteurized milk called Horizon. And during um, during a uh, 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 what was it? When Rooster Teeth did Extra Life, uh, what one of the things they did was that they bought they bought two two half gallons of it three months out from uh, from oh. Extra Life, and like and there were plants like all right, well we got this, you know we'll dr- we'll drink one for this year's Extra Life and we'll drink one for next year's oh, Extra my Life. God. They <laughs> opened. They open the one for that year's extra life, and they're like, "We can't do the one for next year's extra life. We're throwing that, we're throwing that one out." I'm, yeah. I'm, all I'm saying is that if you, for milk specifically, if you are if you are trusting the date only, you're not smelling milk, you're just looking at the date. There's going to be at least one time in your life where you have bad milk, because there are times where I have had milk and I smell it. That milk is bad, and we're not yet to the date. And like, screw oh, that. that well, yeah, you, if, you definitely smell it. Like, yeah. But I'm talking like if that is your only way of doing things. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> no, of, of course you smell it. Like, I'm not just like, let's go. <laughs> and you just freaking go for it. <laughs> I'm not like, like, like chugging that sucker like a daggone frat boy. But no, no, that, that does make sense to smell it first. All I'm saying is that I have had some remarkably long lasting milk from the Costco where it will have a it'll have a date and like a week and a half two weeks later it's still fine and i'm like hmm. okay i don't understand but this milk is still good i just <laughs> i smell it and i'm like i i know what milk is supposed to smell like that doesn't have any any bad viscosity this milk is fine <laughs> oh, oh god <laughs> There's there's been other times where it has went sooner than the date from the Costco, so I'm you know I'm I'm careful, Bruh, I have oh my god, I have picked up milk from the store before, and like I, it was it was in like a uh, opaque bottle, so you couldn't see what was in it. And I freaking go to I go to open it, and it was just bad out of the bottle, like it, nothing moved. And I was like, what in God's name is this? <laughs> I don't know. There might have been like a puncture in the bottle somewhere or something like that. But I was just like, oh, my. Oh, no, I got it from a gas station. That's right. That's right. Here's your first mistake. Yeah. I uh, (laughs) listen. I I wanted cereal that night and I was not able to get it anywhere else. Uh, It was it was late. This was back in like my uh, my college time, like way back when. So, uh, yeah, I picked up that sucker from I remember this. Oh, God. It was a small one. It was a little tiny ones like uh, like Kohlberg's or whatever. And it just I, I went to go pour it. And nothing moved, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> it's an old Hey Arnold bit where Arnold goes to like pour a, a, a bowl of cereal and just like comes out in like one chunk. And I remember and that Grandpa, Grandpa Phil goes, "Out of that milk's gone bad." Or they found a new way to package cottage cheese. <laughs> yeah, I miss that show. Use your eyes. Use your nose. You, That's why you we can, have senses. You you can you can discern a lot about food. If food smells wrong. Like, don't consume it. <laughs> Listen, pretty, like, pretty the, helpful tip. It's an evolutionary thing. Those of us who could smell that the milk was rotten lived on to produce more people who could smell that the milk was rotten. There is an entire website that, like, a government web website that tells you about the specific amount of times that you have for specific leftovers. I thought you were about to say like the specific smells that you should be. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, when did they add scratch and sniff to government websites? <laughs> so, like, again, like don't play around with meat. 
that's dangerous. Yes. And like the thing is, like, you can die. So like, don't die. So you know, if if you've had the chicken in there for two weeks, Steven. Jesus, don't eat the chicken. <laughs> Stephen George, don't die, 2024. Stephen, hey, 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 do not eat the chicken. Do not eat the chicken. But, like, pickles? Pickles are good forever. Like, not forever. That's where this is going? <laughs> All not of the film just with a four-year-old, the, the six-year-old pickles? Six <laughs> years is too long. Don't get me wrong. Six <laughs> years, that's too long on pickles. That's too long on pickles. But pickles are... Yep. Pickles are good for a long time. They're literally pickled. They're, it's, they're pretty safe. Well, I mean, they, they are in, like, vinegar and stuff. Vinegar kills. Yeah, vi vi like vinegar, vinegar and yes. salt are really good at killing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> a good suggestion. For, thank yeah, you for that, Tiger Tiger. Love think it. If you, uh, yeah, just wear a bra while you, uh, while you drum. I'm down. A, a sports bra, that'd be great. There you go. Um, but, like, yeah, because, like, um, I've been going through, like, a bottle of uh, apple cider vinegar for a long time, and I'm not really worried about that. You know, like, because it's vinegar. <laughs> it's not going to frick with me. <laughs> Sorry. Honey. Honey has a remarkably long shelf life. Yeah, honey does too. Sorry, pa paper question in chat. Just said, if you have a six-year-old pickle jar, I'm not sure you like pickles. And that was very funny. <laughs> One star. <for> you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I, uh, uh, honey is honey's good forever. You know, uh, well, mm, it can grow mold. Sure. Mm, that's just weak honey. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the bees that are going to die next. <laughs> uh the um no I had a uh I like um garlic. Garlic I wasn't sure about like my, my like my mom told me that like oh yeah garlic essentially has like a shelf life of like of the forever essentially. Uh. And like I wasn't using it nearly enough to like to to you know be like I don't know how how far out it could be for like garlic, but I went to use it one day and I realized that when I pulled out a clove, there was a lot of space inside of the skin of the clove. Oh yeah, and I was like, I'm not opening this, so I just threw the entire head out. Like, um, I usually will I will use it until it gets softer. Like, I'm just like, cause me and Erica go through a lot of garlic. We add garlic to like everything, and uh, yeah, if if it's if it's even a little bit soft, I'm like, ah, frick that. That's not what garlic's supposed to feel like. <laughs> no. You know what's been like really like uh like satisfying that I see is when people like um roast garlic and it comes out as like a paste. Ooh. Huh. I don't I've never heard of that. Have you seen that? I, I like I, I guess like you like you cook it with like oil. Like you drizzle oil over it and you you cook it. And um and like the 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 garlic, like it it melts. Like the garlic essentially melts, and it just comes out as like a paste. It looks it looks super satisfying. I've never oh. had it before, and it, but it, it seems like it would taste really good. <laughs> we buy you. um we don't even buy normal garlic. We buy the squeezed garlic. Mm. You're gonna get squeezed garlic in a comes out as a paste. It comes out as a paste. It's it's more convenient, and mm -hmm. you can just keep it in the fridge, and it lasts a pretty good long time. I have we've, we've used that for cooking for years. So something that's really fun is like I've actually found a lot of love for prepping food instead. Like I'm not a cook. Like I don't like I don't want to frick things up. Right. Like <laughs> I'm not very good at cooking, but I am like Erica. Erica is just like you're a sous chef. You freaking you love. I love cutting stuff. It's very zen for me. So I will just like I will chop up basically everything for dinner and she'll take care of everything else. And I actually like I asked my parents for like uh, they, they asked me what 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 could you what would you want for Christmas? I'm like a nice knife set, please, because like I have I have freaking I have destroyed like well, I wouldn't say destroyed. I used one a lot that we used to have and they got us like a really nice one this time. And I'm just like, ah, oh, I love it. It's, it's just such a fun experience for me. I don't know why. Do you have, do you have a sharpening set? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, now I do. Um, hmm. The other one didn't come with a sharpening rod. Uh, so now I now after every time I'm doing like chee, 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 I'm like yeah, I'm a ninja let's freaking go I love it but yeah I just um I am I am the cutter for uh for all the food and stuff at the house most of the are, time you are the I, I don't know if there's a uh, if there's a like a, a title for that along the lines of like saucier you know so, I thought it was sous chef I'm the I'm the chopper. <laughs> there, there. So what's funny is like my whole my whole life chopper. Get to the chopper. Like my whole life was changed whenever I figured out the difference between chopping and dicing. 
<laughs> that is a that is a massive level oh, yeah. up in life. Like I, once I mean, you like, figure that out, dicing it dicing is finer. You're getting smaller pieces with dicing. Yep, it's a lot more controlled too. When I um uh my car is in the shop right now because I hit a downed construction sign because it was really windy out, and uh, in that time I've been like, you know what, I like, you know, I I, I went to the grocery store because I was like, okay, I'll get like two weeks of groceries, you know, maybe my car will be done by then. Still not done. Um, I so I decided maybe I'll just like walk around and see what what is around my neighborhood because you know, it's it's a pretty big neighborhood. There's only like really like the only like store near me is a pharmacy. So like, so I can't go there to eat all the time, especially when, when, you know, it's a pharmacy first and, you know, food is second. So everything, everything food wise is like really upped in price. Hmm. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take manatee for a long walk and see what we got. There is a plaza that just has a ton of food trucks in it. And so, so I've been going there for like the past week just to like try out everything they had. I tried a torta for the first time. It's like, it's like a, like a toasted uh, Mexican sandwich. Oh, it's so hmm. good. Dude, um, whenever we would go and visit uh, Jules and them before they moved over in San Diego, uh, there was a place that was about like maybe five, six blocks away from their house, and it was like a barrel. It was like a literal barrel-shaped building, and it was called... (laughs) Yeah, We we go to this one place. It was a barrel. Guy (laughs) pops out, has your food ready right there. We have no idea where he cooks it. It's... No, it's, 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 like, it a sound like, it's like an Oscar the Grouch it's, situation. It's, it's, it's a tall barrel. We have no idea where the food comes from. And everything is expired. No, uh, like, so they, it was a barrel shaped building and they had some of the best tacos I've ever had in my entire life. And I want to just go back over like across the country back to this place again. Um, yeah, oh, God, it's so good, man. I miss it. I. <laughs> Uh, this barrel needs to be in our in our our uh, hypothetical mall that we record this podcast in. <laughs> it's, it's just called the barrel. It's just a barrel. It's it's just it's a it's a barrel and seating, and that's it. That's the entirety of the restaurant. Dang it! Now I want tacos, man. Frick. Oh, oh yeah, they like they had it. They, they had a, they had a um, barrel. So like <laughs> it, it's weird because they have this park with like all the food trucks in it, and then like a little down the like next door to that park is a mechanic and in the mechanic parking lot there's another food truck <laughs> so i went i was like why do they like it, it might be that like maybe the people on that uh, food truck like know the mechanics so they get like the spot cheaper or something like that but it's just weird that it's there they sell tacos at that one and oh my god they are good man there, like, there ain't nothing better, like, taco wise, than like a taco from a food truck, man. That, that crap is so freaking good. Yeah, there's like, there's a bunch of places in that, uh, in in that little, uh, little spot. There's like a place to get, to get coffee. There's a place to get like desserts. There's mm-hmm. a, uh, there's a couple places to get like different Mexican foods. Um, one place like specializes in flautas. The other one specializes in tacos. There's a barbecue place there. The barbecue place is nuts because it's like it's a food truck for barbecue, and there's a trailer attached to it that's the smoker. Mm. So every time I walk by there and, and the place is open, there's always like that nice barbecue smell coming from it. Lucky. Yeah, we don't really have too many good places in my in my hometown to go. Like our our food place. We we finally just got a Chipotle and we're kind of popping off over that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Chipotle's so goddamn good. Chipotle. Um, uh there's that, also um, the, there's also the other neighborhood's dog park that's near there that's only supposed to be for the other neighborhood, but I bring manatee there anyway. John, that um that freaking steakhouse that we went to up in your place, mm-hmm. God, that place was so good. That that I can't remember what the what the fried cheese is called, but my God, that crap was so good. Oh, like the the cheese puffs or like the actual like creme brulee one, Fri- or like the fried cheese curds? No, no, I can't remember what exactly it's called, but it's like. It's like they just give you a freaking a slab of cheese that has been cooked. <laughs> it's really freaking good. Uh, yeah, I, I think that was like the creme brulee cheese. I'll I'll look it up here. Is it Halloumi? No, I don't know exactly what it's called. But my God, R- R- Ricletta, Riclette? R- R- I have no clue. I'm looking it up. Don't worry. Chat has like, like to, uh, so many different names for this right now. 
I went to Culver's for the, apparently I didn't realize that like uh, Culver's was like more of a Midwest thing because like I, I there's been w there's one in Austin that's just here for like the longest time and I was like oh neat <laughs> <laughs> like like it's it's just it's just here like they're serving they're serving up Wisconsin favorites in uh in or wherever Culver's is from mm. and like in, in in Wisconsin okay in in Texas great so I you know their cheese curds are so good their concrete mixers are really good I've never been to a Culver's. Well, come visit. <laughs> when, we are when you, we we definitely need to come up there. Um, when you talk about not having like a lot of restaurants, I'm like cannot relate. That is, <laughs> is what that is one of the yeah. reasons that we moved to Raleigh. <laughs> it's yeah, like, no, when, when you when you everything. move when you move to like a capital city or like oh, any sort yeah. of like high populated area, you've got everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although, although. I was cra I, there was something I thought about last night. You don't have I was buddies. Like, I was like, Mal, can you Google this and see if you can find all of them in Raleigh? And she did. And she's like, there are none. And I was like, what? Are you <laughs> telling me there's not any breakfast buffets? And she said, the only result is Golden Corral. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and, and your last uh, endeavor to Golden Corral... <laughs> I don't think you want to go back there for a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. Yeah, it's not high on my list, and I'd rather go to like a mom and pop breakfast buffet place. But apparently there are none. So I don't think I've ever been to a breakfast buffet. See, we had. Well, a bunch I mean, of... I've been, I mean, I've been to a Golden Corral, but like, I wanted to get out of there as soon as I entered. <laughs> See, we, we, had, we actually had a bunch of breakfast buffets in Myrtle Beach, but that made sense because we catered to golfers who woke mm. up super early in the morning mm. to go play golf. So they would go eat breakfast buffet. So we had a bunch of them. Mm. And then I moved to Raleigh where we have everything except breakfast buffet. I, and now I, now I miss it. I still love when... <laughs> I still love when uh, when uh, I was visiting there and we went to Waffle House and uh, raisins in my toast started blaring over the jukebox and you're like, Dan, you're going to get us killed. <laughs> Man. They're going to figure out it's you, Dan. You're going to be banned. They'll just, from... they'll just ban his account at that point. <laughs> just, just lock him out of the account. Yeah. Well, he uh. was at the Waffle House with us, so he was going to get killed too. <laughs> Didn't we play Raisins in My Toast at the Waffle House after... After Coliseum, uh, yeah. Coliseum. Yeah, it was but also I, 3 o'clock in the morning, so, like, no it was, one well, was there except for the well, staff. Well, not only was it 3 o'clock in the morning, but there were, like, 16 of us there, so I think we had the advantage in numbers. Like, maybe, like, one or two of us would have died to that, but, like, I, th I feel like that, uh, that you know, it was worth playing Raisins in My, uh, in my Toast for us to be able to, to um, combat... Uh, the potential naysayers to the uh, the the Waffle House Publishing Company. It worked. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> My thought often is like, "Well, did you live? Then it's yeah. fine. <laughs> Everything's going fine." <laughs> we did wait a long time for that waffle. Yeah. We were in there a while. I, I, I've, I've said it on breakfast stream before, but like, if you go to Waffle House, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to not get something you ordered, or you're going to get something in addition to what you ordered that you didn't order. That's just how it works. Well, but or the other thing too is that like on you that you don't want, when, but they can't seem to understand that you don't want. When we the, left, the, hash the waffle counts were free, Jonathan. I, I don't know why. Want them. I did not. not want we're not them. doing this again. <laughs> anyway when we left the waffle house we realized that they were we were only there for like an hour though because we were all so freaking tired after the whole week no no no. this is uh, for when i was down there with steven oh okay it did feel like we were there for three hours yeah it, did, it felt like we were there for much longer but we were only there for like an hour because we went to was, we went to one place when you what? were with us was that when the guy was trying to like buy crack or no I don't, I don't believe so. No. Okay. Sorry. We went. To, that would be we pretty memorable. Waffle... <laughs> Damn. Okay, what are I you doing? Because <laughs> it was the same Waffle House. I didn't know if it was when you were with us or not. There was a guy when we walked in. He was, you know, asking. He was like, "Y'all have anything fun?" And we're, we're like, we're just trying to ignore him. Like, listen, we're gonna eat like a waffle. I brought... Like, you have any crack? I brought my Game Boy, sir. <laughs> Is that fun enough? 
And I'm like, no, man. Why? Why do we? Sorry. Why does everybody? I don't, I don't have any crack. <laughs> everybody has a Waffle House story. Like every single person on this planet, I think, has one. Who's ever been in one, at least? You could go to a Waffle House one time, and it will be a memorable experience. There you go. <laughs> Waffle. Uh, I mean, it's, you could also you could you, you could also like tell how um how safe it is uh based on how much of the menu Waffle House has. Sorry, a- Asteroid wrote in chat. That's one hundred percent a cop. Yeah. No, no, it was not. <laughs> you're gonna have to take you're gonna have to take my word on this. Uh, not a cop. Uh, <laughs> Definitely not a cop. Like I'm, uh, I feel real certain about Man, this. We, we, yeah, we don't remember that officer's name. We just call him Officer Glass Eye Missing Hand Peg Leg. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's it's not the first time I've been asked for drugs outside of a Waffle House. Uh, it's fine. and did you have any? No, no. See, fun thing about uh, uh, internet personality Stephen George. You're not gonna. You're not gonna offer him some eleven year old Pepto Bismol. <laughs> He doesn't carry drugs on him, um, and that's very unfortunate for the people that are waiting patiently outside of the Waffle Houses across this great nation. Just carry uh, carry dime bags of powdered sugar and throw them when uh, when someone approaches you like that. <laughs> oh my God! Don't do drugs, kids. Don't snort powdered sugar either. No. Sorry, my my cat is yelling at me through my door. Give me a second. (laughs) Dad! Dad! Father, where are you? Father. I demand violence, Father. Demand attention. Father. I will will create violence if there is not attention given. Blue, come here. Little wiener, what are you doing? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's a good kitty. (laughs) He is now on my lap. Yeah, good boy. It's been a long Manatee. time since you've been on uh, since you've been on disc only, huh? I wish Manatee was more cuddly. He likes to <laughs> lie down. He likes to lie down between my legs when uh, when I'm going to bed. But he's not one to uh, to. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we got Wizard the Wizard put uh, tape on his nips. Those and are it's not. not... It, it, it's not tape. It's not like it's not like electrical <laughs> tape or anything. It's cassette tapes. <laughs> Dude, I love that. I love that. That's the way that they went with that. Holy, it's a, frick, it's, a, it's a rush. It's a it's a rush single and summer of '69 by Brian Adams. It's a rush mixtape, man. I'm Rick. curious. I don't know because this is never something I've had to research. But do they make like medical pasties? Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that could be an option. Also, I didn't have like, any of those <laughs> for like certain shirts. Like, if you find a shirt you really want to wear, but you can't have a specific uh, yeah fabric well so so one of the things with that is that the way that i used to play i used to play kind of like crazy all the time then i do go a little bit crazy every now and then but the way that i would play it it, it would it, my shirt would move around a lot so like now i play with a much more reserved style as reserved as i can get and it doesn't do it nearly as much so like a tighter shirt is probably better for you yes mm-hmm. yeah yeah I've I've learned what works and what doesn't over the years. That is for sure. That's one of the advantages of getting older is you you learn more about yourself. <laughs> you figure and it out what what fabrics you can have on your body. <laughs> yeah, you feel you figure out that you don't like freaking chafed nipples. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you'd learn that quick. <laughs> yeah, you learn that very fast. That's like a like a life fast lesson. thing. Yeah. <laughs> freaking. And, and then you learn whether or not you like chafed nipples. <laughs> The answer is no. <laughs> for like, I'm pretty sure for like 99 percent of the population, the answer is no. <laughs> but that one percent. I know that this is going to come up in my freaking cast, and I'm going to have to explain to everybody why this is being talked about. People don't understand that what happens on disc only stays on disc only. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, like, I, like Las Vegas. Definitely, I live by that rule. Uh-huh. If, so, if 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 I say some sort of insane thing here, 
and someone <laughs> tries to bring it up on like a Friday stream, I'm just I like I don't know what you're talking about. Just, <laughs> just, think, just gaslight. <laughs> so things things that, that things that are that originate here are they stay here. This is that Las was, Vegas. That wasn't me. That was my disc only alter ego, Jeevan Storge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that guy. <laughs> that stuff is just for oh. disc only. I'm Fom Tox. <laughs> I'm Frick. Uh oh god, the, why the, does my name the, have to be so the, long? <laughs> the, the bait the bait drit ummer? <laughs> the the date bit uh frick. That's the word. <laughs> and this. Jotan Prawn. <laughs> I was like, is he gonna go the Rosa John route or is he gonna just flip the name? Which is he gonna do? Jotan Prawn. Oh my god. I did that with everybody. I like Jotan Prawn. It's kinda like a big shrimp. <laughs> you know listen charles i didn't have any i had to use what i had okay sorry Ans answering a question well, well now you gotta read it out because the audio podcast can't see all right so uh a buddy of mine says they have nipple pads just saying i'm like i didn't have any of them charles okay <laughs> Oh my god. This is gonna be <laughs> just waiting for the next drum session where you get like where you get something for it, but you go overboard with it. So there's just these two square lumps poking out where your nipples are. <laughs> it's so true. Uh, <laughs> oh frick. <laughs> Sorry, my cat is being exceedingly, exceedingly loving right now. Aw. He's a good boy, holy frick. Oh yeah, what I was saying before, like I, I wish Manatee was more uh, was more like cuddly. He'll occasionally cuddle up to me on like the couch if he's like super tired. It's usually he's uh, cuddliest when he's the most tired. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is a good art. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's 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 the 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 restaurant and barrel. The sign is a uh, Cracker Barrel sign, but Cracker has been uh, scribbled out. It's Underneath it says "Try our new expired Pepto cakes," and it's a barrel. It's a barrel with. With two chairs and a table, dude. Okay, so speaking of Cracker Barrel, have y'all ever had the? Um, I think it's like the uh, Coca Cola cake that they had for a little while. No, yes. dude, that crap was so good. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds good. I know. I know people use uh, will sometimes use like carbonated uh, beverages like a leavener and baked goods. Yeah, it's it. It is kind of like transcendent how good that crap is. Uh, we we've only we. We didn't really go there that much, but when we did, man, holy frick! So was know, it? I don't know if it's was still it like, there. So given your given your your propensity for it, was it Coke Classic or was it like Coke <laughs> Coke Original? No, that's Coca Cola. Is what that <laughs> is like the original Coca Cola? Yeah, the, emphasis on the Coca. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. No, no, listen. No, I was. I do not have crack in the cake. Okay, that, <laughs> man, that, that's from Waffle just, House. Oh, that's great! You can get some of that cake and give it to that guy outside of Waffle House. <laughs> I really, there was nothing that could prepare me for episode forty talking so much about cocaine. Like, there's a lot. It's more than I was expecting. Listen, this listen. This doesn't feel like the first episode where we discuss cocaine, though. No, but it's. I think it's the most. How? It's how did remember? <laughs> How do we not talk about this whenever Jules was here? <laughs> I remember TRG Coliseum, uh, like I think it was 2022. It was the one where like only eight of us were in the beach house, and it just, like during during like the vlogging por portion, we we're just like, yeah, there's only eight of us, and I'm like, I'll have the strength of ten men. It's gonna require a lot of cocaine. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's um, don't uh, don't do cocaine no yeah um, that's a, that's don't, a don't, don't put it on don't. french toast it looks like powdered sugar but just don't <laughs> don't uh don't do that god i love the fact that i was talking about freaking literal soda cake and this is where y'all took it only on the disc only podcast listen, we're mid at best <laughs> listen like the way you you talked about it i can imagine that there's like someone who tried that cake that's like scratching their arm going back to cracker barrel being like hey can i get another hit listen that okay okay so legitimately that cake was freaking good like very good it i don't believe that it contained drugs but it was just about as addicting as it i guess <laughs> find the vein jared find the vein In inject cake <laughs> cracker barrel is, cracker ah. barrel is good food 
we were actually we were talking about that earlier in uh, Discord, and it's it mm. is it's a it's a. I mean, there's always going to be like one of them out there that you go to and like, oh, this was a bad experience. But most of the Cracker Barrels I've been to, uh, pretty good experience, pretty good food. Dude, I think my favorite thing from Cracker Barrel is the fried okra. Like that is just god tier. I do, I do like fried okra. Yeah, me, me, and you are from the south. We're from, yeah, we're from South Kakalaki. So, John, yeah. what's your favorite? John, what's your favorite food from uh, from Cracker Barrel? I have never eaten at a Cracker Barrel. They do not exist up here. That's my favorite too, because oh my. I have never eaten a Cracker Barrel either. <laughs> All right. So, so whenever, whenever you come, whenever you come over here, we got to take you to a Cracker Barrel at some point. Every time I come decent. down, I uh, oh no, it's Golden Corral. I'm thinking. I'm never mind. I was gonna say every time I go down, Reese is like, you can't, you should not go there. And I realized it was Golden Corral, not Cracker Barrel. So yeah, like who uh, are you? Who are you visiting in the U.S. that's trying to drag you to a Golden Corral? And why? <laughs> <do you> <laughs> People just want me to have the full life experience of living in the U.S. I guess I don't know. <laughs> it's, I don't know take, if it's worth take it. Take a, a year of your life off. Yeah. <laughs> whoever whoever they are, like that, you know, they they put their large grease covered hand on your show, and they're, they're like, John, I'm taking you to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> No, oh, damn it! I'm taking your Golden Corral. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> just let's just call it Cracker Corral. Why not? That'd be perfect. <laughs> Golden Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I can't. Oh, I really like Cracker Corral. Oh, I'm awake now. Oh, I'm Listen, awake now. I can't Man. take credit for that. That was Silent Companion Ooh. who said that in chat. That was fantastic. That's a good. <laughs> mm, that's very good. That's just. <laughs> Have y'all ever had Hardee's and or Carl's Jr.? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. They have good breakfast sandwiches at Which Carl's. Which one have you had? Hardee's or Carl's Jr.? Oh. Hardee's. Carl's Jr. Oh. Yeah. I grew I grew up around Hardee's, um, but I had experienced the novelty of going to a Carl's Jr. Although I think they started to change the Hardee's to Carl's Jr.'s. Maybe. So they're 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 the same restaurant. They used yeah. to not be. They're the same restaurant. G Carl's Jr. bought out Hardee's. I know this because my mom used to work at Hardee's at around the time they were bought out. And they started rebranding all the Hardee's to Carl's Jr. around that time. Mm. And everybody hated it. No one was going to the Carl's Jr.'s. So they just rebranded all the Carl's Jr.'s back to Hardee's. <laughs> and then and then just like didn't change it. So Carl's Jr.'s is like a West Coast thing and Hardee's is an East Coast thing. Yeah. 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 But they're the exact <laughs> same restaurant. Yeah, Hardee's um, slash Carl's Jr. has had an interesting history because they had some very uh, questionable advertising in the uh, like mid two thousands, and um, it was uh, aimed at men. That were like, you want this burger? Here's this woman who's not wearing very much clothes, and she's eating the burger. Do you want to eat the burger too? It's a six dollar burger, but it's not quite six dollars. Come to Hardee's. That just makes me not want to eat there. I'm gonna be honest. Carl's Jr. controversial ad. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The th the thumbnail the thumbnail itself is enough to make me realize why this commercial was controversial. This lady uh. knows how to use a jackhammer. Oh, this is a. Uh, Do you like burgers? <laughs> <laughs> a, th no, this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, the video I found is a Good Morning America report on <laughs> over the top Super Bowl ad. Does commercial go too far? <laughs> the answer, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was in 2015. Wow. Yes. <laughs> the oh food, my god. The food at Hardee's, much like Disc Only, was mid at best. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the layers upon layers. <laughs> the um, the breakfast was fine though. I agree with Jared. I think I think uh, Hardee's had good good breakfast. I yeah. feel like I, I feel like the way they're advertising it, it's like the uh, the the Seinfeld episode where George tries to incorporate eating into sex. I've never oh, seen that. Oh, his two favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. He tried going for the trifecta by watching TV at the same time and the woman wasn't into it. <laughs> Man. And at the very end, there's a woman making making uh, pastrami and 
God, is that pastrami? And she's like, yes, I find pastrami to be the most sensual of the meats. And that's the end of the episode. So speaking of food, um, what is y'all's favorite food? Like, what would you say overall is your favorite food, period? Pizza. That's a good choice, honestly. You can't, you, you can't go wrong with pizza. That That's a really good one. It's it's delicious. It's... um. You could there's a lot of variety with it. Yeah, true. Like you you can make anything a pizza. Or you could put anything <laughs> on a pizza rather. <laughs> Look, if I learned anything from Ninja Turtles, you can make anything into a pizza. There you go. I'm, like, I'm just gonna go ahead and crush up my 13-year-old Pepto Bismol tabs <laughs> into a flower. <laughs> make it make a nice dough, a nice pink dough out of that. Why don't we Do top it. that off oh. with some Advil and some more Pepto Bismol for the sauce? Oh. Well, I mean, Reddit, why don't we just melt, well, we're just gonna melt some cocaine over the top. So, uh, John, uh, are, you, are you are you are you thinking about uh, ending the podcast like right now? Or uh, uh, I'm well, I've lost my appetite at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. The, le, d, 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 try try Mama Tom's brand new pizza. It'll cure your stomach, get rid of your headache, and make you very focused. I love the fact that freaking Dan put the talking points in Discord right after I said that. Even Dan was like, <laughs> "We got to end this nonsense." Oh my god. <laughs> But my answer is breakfast sandwiches followed by pizza. I would say that that is my my two favorite types of food just overall. That this and whatever question, else Erica makes. But yeah, this question is too hard. It is kind of a hard <laughs> question, but like it's an eye opening one. Try Mama <laughs> Tom's new meth salad. No, oh my god. Like maybe maybe sushi because it's I, because I like sushi and I uh, it's kind of like a special thing mm. yeah that's fair um like i had some i had some sashimi today and that was just so good and i'm like oh i love this this is delicious uh mm. that might be my favorite thing i do <laughs> like i do like uncooked but well prepared fish sushi, sushi and pizza are the two are two really one like high ones up there so like I am I am not a fan of sushi at all like uh Erica loves it but I I am not a fan I would I can do like maybe an Alaskan roll and that's about it. Like just the salmon roll or whatever, but I, I don't know. It's just something about the texture. Oh, another great answer. Strawberries. Dude, mm. yo, I've been on a strawberry kick recently. I, I think I've been like, are fruit, good. fruit in yeah. general. Like so fruit. many fruits in general, yeah. Fruit, 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 fruit. Fruit, like, fruit. fruit, fruit yes, but like, man, st straw there's something about getting a very, very ripe strawberry. And Have you ever done that many? There's not going to be that many times in your life where you taste like the perfect strawberry, but you'll know it when you taste it. Have and you ever been is, to like mm. one of the, oh, what is it called? The Like the you pick strawberry fields or whatever? Oh, yeah. Where you lot. go out there with a bucket and you just get all the strawberries you could ever want. Oh, my God. There's so many <sighs> photos of me as a child in the fields just eating <laughs> the strawberries off the vine. <laughs> yup. Oh my god! Mm. Yeah, so if you're if you're saying if you're saying like fruit, yeah, I would say fruit. Great you know, about, good choice. I, I love. I, I love my favorite like summertime dish is just like freezing grapes. Never had that. You free oh. you freeze you freeze a grape and then like you put them in a bowl. You let them warm up just a little bit and they turn to like a slushy, like yeah. the little they turn to like oh. little slushy pods. Dude, never tried that before. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna try that. <laughs> John, what about you? What's your favorite? What's your favorite food? Before I so rudely interrupted, I already said it was pizza. Oh, well, I, I want to know your favorite fruit. My favorite fruit. Yeah, fruit. Sorry, yeah. Uh, probably apples, strawberries, and bananas are up there too. Apples are good. Macintosh apples are very good. And Spartans, baby. There uh, are I'm, very good apples. I'm a honey crisp boy. Y'all know that. I think I talked yeah. about this last time. I'm in the minority that likes Red Delicious. Red Delicious, all right. They're they're a hit or miss with me. Sometimes they'll hit the spot, and sometimes like this is too much. Like uh, so I'll, I'll go to like the grocery store and I'll see the other apple. And to me, it's about like I want to take a nice, big, satisfying bite. And Red Delicious fills that void because they're usually the biggest apples. Mm. I mean, I I like apples, but on my fruit tier list, uh, the middle, mm. definitely the middle. Like yeah. 
Strawberries are high up. Peaches. Peaches. Not are not very big good. on peaches for some reason. Oh God, peaches. There are so many places. In, well, I don't know about North Carolina, but in South Carolina, there are so many places in Myrtle Beach that, like in the summer, there's just like guy, a guy on the side of a road with with his truck, and he he's just made a sign with cardboard that's like, "I have peaches." Can't you believe stop he's... and you give him eight dollars. I can't believe he smuggled them in from from Georgia. <laughs> oh God, they're so good. Have you ever? Oh, and you can have you can have grilled peaches. You can throw them on the grill. Oh my God! I've never had grilled peaches. Them. I'm wondering how that tastes. They're very good because when you, you cut them and then you you grill them, so it caramelizes them, mm-hmm. and it is whoo whoo. That's a sweet treat. That's very good. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a um, a Mexican soda here called, and I'm probably butchering this. Uh, Harito Haritos J A R R I T O S. Yeah. So good. Oh my god. Th- th- that's like the best fruit soda I've ever had. I, yeah, they're, I've, I've, the, the pineapple one is so good. I've had the, the tamarind and the orange as well. Orange isn't as good, but like the, the pineapple is just so good. I've never actually had Doritos. I've, I've seen them. I've seen them in store. I haven't picked them up, though. Yeah, uh, Alex drank a lot of uh, Doritos in college. I don't know why, but he bought it a lot. That and Little Hug. <laughs> Sorry, when I say little hug, I realize that that's an insane thing to say. But <laughs> are you talking about the little like the little things that look like they're in little barrels? Yeah, he, I, actually, I, love that, I love that. That he works might out. have only purchased it once, and that was enough for me to internalize <laughs> that he loved little hug. Oh, he loves little hug because because why would you do that? Like he bought the little tiny juice for children, and then I had them. Steven, you have introduced me to something that, were I to be able to get a regular supply of them, would probably send me into diabetic shock. <laughs> Cheerwine is mm, so good. Yeah. yeah. I also Cheerwine found it really good. funny that, like, we're, I, like, I was trying one for the first time and we we're, like, talking about it, and you're like, yeah, they, uh, they, uh, they're, they're caffeine free. And I was like, are you sure? And it's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I look at the ingredients, like, the third one on there is caffeine. <laughs> Dude, Cheerwine, Cheerwine will freak you up, man. Like it is, it is so ridiculous. Good. Um, it's whenever a, it's, a, it's a cherry flavor, it's a cherry soda. It's not a, it, if if it has any cola in it, it's very subtle. But mm-hmm. it, it is, it is for the most part a cherry soda. It is so good. It's a North Carolina soda, and it's good. My buddy uh, Jacob, y'all know him, Secret Agent Jacob. He absolutely loves Cheerwine. It's it's insane how much he loves Cheerwine. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm I'm letting you finish here because I want to say Jesus Christ! The meatball man is back. Yep. Oh man. The tiniest head, the biggest body. The tiny. Yep. It's just, it's it's the meatball man, but he's got a. But if his, I mean, like if his head is proportional to like how it normally is, then that's still a giant head. But it's very it's very tiny compared to the body. Super, and it's a very super, mus- muscular meatball man. Super Meat Boy is different than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> I, think, I, I, th- I think back to like <laughs> how Alex introduced it to us. It's like it's a big sign that says the meatball man. <laughs> the mid only podcast. Mid only. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I love seeing I love seeing before you take it down the, the cursor scroll over to retweet. <laughs> 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 I agree with this. Pizza. No problem. What are your favorite? What are your favorite toppings for pizza? Meat. Pepperoni. Pepperoni purist, uh, baby. That's all I get. I don't give a frick. <laughs> every topping is every topping is valid, but uh, mushroom. If I'm gonna, ha- if I if I'm allowed one topping, mushroom, mushroom. good. See, I like. I'm a little bit like. <sighs> I like light cheese. I like like I like not as much cheese as it normally goes on pizza. So like yeah. because I, because I like the because my favorite part of the pizza is the sauce. So in, yeah, you get like double sauce and like light cheese. Frick yeah, I can't I can't do double sauce. That's too much. It's got to be a balance. Well, uh, do you get like a like a side order of the marinara sauce? No, dude. Try, try get one of them and dip your pizza in it. 
Interesting. It's so freaking good, dude. <laughs> oh, so, ma- uh, like, Mal, like... Mal reminded me of meatball pizza. That is also a good choice. <laughs> the meatball pizza. Meatball pizza is very good. I do what? highly recommend meatball pizza. Uh, but no, what I was saying before it was the uh, the um normal amount of sauce, light cheese, uh, mm-hmm. pineapple, bacon, and spinach. It's my favorite pizza. One of my favorite moments on my cast was whenever we introduced um, my cast to Erica's favorite pizza, which was the himbo pizza. <laughs> it's a yeah. ham. I think it's ham, mushroom, bacon, and onion. So it's himbo. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is still one of my freaking funniest things. Because we were ordering a pizza on, on cast, and she she like says them all out. Oh, well, and I'm like, okay, so this, 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 this. And Erica goes, yeah, it's a himbo pizza over the phone. And you can hear her because it's on that. <laughs> I freaking lose my mind, man. <laughs> it made me laugh so hard, dude. That that right there is like a stream moment classic. If you take two lasagnas and put them on top of each other, is that one lasagna? Yes. Yeah. I think it's I think it's time to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean like permanently, permanently end the show. This is it. We're done. That was it. Lasagna is what did this it. Is the end. We made, we made it, it 40, forty episodes. Good job, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, we made good. forty we episodes. All right. Last getting, episode of Disco Only. Mid at best. Underneath Let's go. some lasagna. <laughs> all right. This is the way the world ends, not with a shout, but with lasagna. Ah, the Garfield finale. Oh, damn, I just got my Garfield shirt in today. My You wouldn't download a lasagna shirt. <laughs> do you still have the Neon Genesis Evangelion one? Of course one? I do. Why would I get I rid of such an amazing that, shirt? I love that shirt. To those who don't know, it's, it's, it's a shirt of Garfield saying next to, like, what appears to be the Garfield and Friends logo. It just says Neon Genesis Evangelion instead of Garfield and Friends. Yeah, I've, I've, that's a good shirt. If you if you've never seen it before, I've th- this is what cardboard John wears at Coliseum. It's it's this, but like it's black. There it instead. is. <laughs> there it is. Love that <laughs> shirt so much. All right, talking points for this episode of Disc Only. Mid at best. <laughs> that John is little. Put the humor in me. Controlled by crowd. Were you all right over there? Yeah, sorry. This is the way you said that. Put the humor in me. good. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> uh, could... Arch, <laughs> aren't you forgetting to ask someone? I consent. I consent. I don't. <laughs> <clears throat> Controlled by crowd. Bang and Pepto. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, is it banging Pepto? I the drink know. is banging. It's, ba- it's a banging bangin Pepto. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Cracker Corral. Northern Soda. Himboza. <laughs> Layers like a lasagna. We talked about that for all two minutes and it made the talking point. We had a low list this week or this month, apparently. <laughs> we did stick to topics for longer than normal. We did good. What y'all got going on this month? Immediately after this, I'm going back to shiny hunting Quagsire again. Why are you still uh, doing this to yourself? Because I haven't caught it yet. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so um, what are we at? We reached, hang on, I got, I actually have OBS open right now. We reached, uh, 946. I'm planning on hitting a thousand tonight, unless we catch it. Um, and, uh, this Saturday is, uh, my birthday. Well, March 9th, I'll be turning 34 to celebrate. I'll be doing a 12 hour stream of various crowd control games, uh, between finishing off Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Randomizer with crowd control moving on to Lethal Company with friends, then doing Star Fox 64, and um, finally Mario Party 3. 
Uh, aside from that, for the rest of the month, I'm probably going to do something stupid for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, mm-hmm. And aside from that, I got nothing else planned aside from trying to finish Fire Emblem Engage, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, and Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope. Manatee has the sleep woofs. I'm done. Um, yeah, we we do breakfast stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we play Zelda on Fridays um, at 9 p.m. Breakfast stream is at breakfast time, so it's like 9 a m oh the other thing <laughs> we've been playing moon which is the the love to game that came before tulip but it's basically tulip and today we we got to a part that it's it's just rng it's just rng and rng has not been kind to us so um <laughs> until i can do that we can't finish the game so tomorrow at 1 p.m eastern i think i'm just going to play the game by myself it's a fishing tournament so i'm just going to be playing a 1997 playstation (laughs) one game where i fish over and over and when i don't get it because i won't i have to reset the entire game and just do it again it's um it's fun i'm I'm having fun can't believe love to like beat sega to pro bass fishing (laughs) jared how about you uh drumming on youtube and twitch monday tuesday friday and saturday um uh, I mean, that's literally the main thing that I do. Uh, oh, th- so in seven days, actually, on March 12th, um, I the will have hit... The is coming for you? Yes. No, I um, I will have hit one year of drawing every day. So I'm very, nice. very excited about that. <laughs> Hell yeah, congrats. I, Are you going to celebrate by can't. never drawing again? Is that, is uh, that No, the dude, I want to I keep that streak going for as long as possible, man. Uh, but yeah, I'm super, super excited about that. I've been having a lot of fun with it and I just want to continue, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, drumming on YouTube and Twitch four days a week as normal. And that's about it for me. And thank you chat for the, for the congrats. I appreciate y'all. And then the girl from the videotape gets Jared. Yeah, <laughs> oh that, that's pretty much how it works there at that point. I am so fucking tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I if I seem a little out of it, I just I just drained today. I don't know what's going on. But uh otherwise, uh busy week for me this week. We got tomorrow we're doing the birthday wheel cuz on November I let my viewers add games to a wheel and we just spin it and play whatever game comes up for 20 minutes or until we get a game over, whichever happens first. Uh, and I was foolish and set the amount of points too low because there are 1,430 games left on the wheel. Oh, oh my no. God. So we will not ever be finishing that wheel, but it is nice to pull from randomly to see what we play. That's nuts, actually. <laughs> yeah, so what are we doing that Wednesday, uh, Friday? I'm finishing up Resident Evil 5 with Camille. We've been playing through that. Uh, Saturday is fortune cookie as per usual. And then onwards, then we're back to the usual Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Monday, we do game clearing this week. We finished, uh, Sparkster, which is one of the rocket Knight adventure games and, uh, Michael Jackson's moonwalker, uh, who knows what we'll do next week. Dan. Ooh. Um, hi. Hello. Oh, I should. Okay. Um, uh, Twitch.tv slash motion, Dan. Um, this Thursday, I'm actually going to be playing uh, a game. I think it's called Fork Knife. Fork um, Knife, baby. With uh, with Mr. Josh Jepson because he hit that sub goal. Um, and uh, Massey and uh, Laughing Boy. So come join us. It'll be a thing. That happens. Oh, I'll, and um, I'll nobody no, judging them all. Okay, good. Um, also, since somebody asked me, uh, my favorite fruit. I really like dates. Have you all had dates? That anyway. is such an I've, unusual answer. I've had not them once. In, They're all right. Uh, not in four years. <laughs> uh, also, I, avocados. I have not ever actually had a date. Um. The fruit, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just I've never tried them. I mean, you don't really just kind of find them around. You kind of got to go out of your way to get them. True. You ever had a prune? 
Yes. I have had a prune, yeah. They're actually good. They taste good. Mm-hmm. And they make they make you poop, right? They make you poop. <laughs> like <laughs> on a scale from one to ten. John, I think it's time. Like you only need like, one. No, Send no. it! Send John, it! it only please. Need... Special thank you to Pots and Martin. Stop Prism Sharp for our logo. Pay pants for people. Now we're going to be here next month. We're going to be here next month. We're going to be here next First edition of the month. It's going to be second of Tuesday. I'm available. Tuesday, second of April. Everybody! Everybody! We're going to go, 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 go. Goodbye! All I'm saying is that if you pick up a pack of prunes and you're like, oh, I'm going to eat like two or three, please don't. Please eat one and give yourself some time just to know, you know, for certain Help. what's going to happen to your body Help. because it might not be from, so good. On a scale from one to ten, how much poop? Well, it's not ten? that it, it, it doesn't invent new poop. Like, John, can you fast forward this? <laughs> you can't, like, it doesn't just invent poop. It just, you know, the, 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 the loosening of the bowels. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you use invent instead of make. Ladies and gentlemen, the loosening of the bowels. Uh, Bye. Bye, everybody.